A couple of days ago, I went to my P.O. box and I found this Longwood pencil kit and this beautiful piece of black locust. Dave Patterson sent me this Longwood pen kit along with this beautiful piece of mesquite. The tube for the Longwood pencil kit requires a 3 8 inch drill bit. It is an incredible 4 and 3 8 inches in length. Here's the tube for the Longwood pen kit. It requires a 3 8 inch drill bit and it is 4 and an eighth inches in length. What we're going to end up doing is chucking this bit up. And we're going to drill into the blank as deep as we can. And then you can see I've made a mark here. We'll rechuck the bit to that mark and drill the rest of the way into the blank. I left just enough at the tip of the bit to get the proper depth. Then we'll take our blank over to our bandsaw and we'll cut the end off of it. And we should have a nice entry and exit hole and a blank that is the proper length. You always want to mark all four corners and you'll notice there are four lines on the blank. The thickness of the pencil lead will not put me dead center of the blank. So by drawing all four corners or by marking all four corners, we can then find dead center. We've reached the maximum movement that we have with our drill press. It's time now to recheck our bit and we'll move the blank up onto the bit to finish drilling. With the blank drilled to the proper depth, we're going to use our tube to measure the length of blank we need to cut off at the bandsaw. I'm going to leave just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch on either end of the tube, but we now have a nice cut line. you notice the entry hole is roughly center of the blank where the exit hole is off to one side. There's a couple of things that could have caused this. Number one, when, when we're using a bit that is that long in a wood that is this hard, the bit can veer to one side or another of the blank when it hits the grain. It'll sort of follow that path. The other thing that can cause this is if this blank was not perfectly square when we put it into the vise, it would be sitting at a bit of an angle and that would cause the bit, if it drilled straight down through the blank, to come out close to the side. This is not an issue because we are still well within the depth of our bushings. And we'll demonstrate that now. You can see there's plenty of material above that bushing to be turned away. I went ahead and pre-scuffed my tube and plugged both ends with a little bit of Play-Doh. We're gonna be using a two-part epoxy. We'll get this nice and mixed up. Then we'll spread it on our tube and get the tube inserted into the blank. I'm going to take our time with this and make sure we have nice coverage all around the tube. Now we'll push it just below the surface. I'm going to stop and clean that off. Just below the surface. And it looks like it's just below the surface on the opposite end. And this blank is ready to dry overnight and we'll be able to turn tomorrow. The epoxy has had plenty of time to dry. Let's go ahead and push the plug out of the end of our blank.
I've got my blank chucked up and I'm ready to begin turning. Now I've never turned mesquite before, but looking at the wood uh, and, and just the feel of it, the way it's sanded, it doesn't seem like it's all that hard. So I think it's gonna turn really nicely. Uh, you may remember that when I drilled this blank, uh, I got a little bit off. You can kind of see at this end of the blank how the bushing is very close compared to this end. So we kind of went at a bit of an angle with the bit. Uh, shouldn't hurt anything. There's plenty of meat above the bushing. So I'll be able to true that up. It's just gonna look a little weird when I first start spinning it because you can see how it kind of, it looks like it's wobbling, but it actually is uh, centered and ready to turn. Overall, my mesquite blank turned very well. I have one little issue. You'll see it coming up here in a second right there. I took a little chip out. Uh, what I'm gonna do though, I'm, I'm not concerned about it. I think I have a little bit of a lip here, a little bit of a lip here, and I'm still kind of thick in the middle. So I wanna take a couple of more passes, bring that down a little bit. And what I'll do is you'll notice the grain going this way. I'm not gonna take the skew this way because that's where I lifted that grain and probably caused the chip out. So we'll. We'll start past that and clean down to the bushing, and then we'll take the skew and work from left to right in order to uh, clean up that little chip and avoid lifting any more wood or any more of the grain. I've slowed my lathe down to 840 RPMs. That's just where the setting is on my lathe. Uh, your lathe may be different. I like to be around anywhere from five to 700 RPMs when I sand. This blank is looking really nice. I wanna give it a wipe down with some denatured alcohol so you can kind of get an idea of what the finish pin is gonna look like. Take a look at that grain. I hope, I hope I'm turning it slow enough where you can see it because it's absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting it. Well, actually I'm gonna go ahead and get it off of these bushings onto uh, my nonstick bushings and then we'll come back and uh, finish it up. Looks like there's some centrifugal scratches in there, but when you look really closely, they're not actually scratches. I think it's just some feature of the wood. It's really weird. I've cleaned up all around my lathe to avoid the possibility of getting any dust in my finish. And now we're just gonna clean our blank really well because we were handling it and I don't want any oil from my fingers in the blank. And be sure to not only uh, clean the blank while it's spinning, but also to roll the blank by hand and clean it back and forth or wipe it back and forth because that's going to help with getting anything that might be uh, in the grain of the wood. What I'm doing now is just looking at the blank. Sometimes lint from the paper towel will get on the blank. And I'm just trying to knock that off before we apply our finish. Looks pretty good. I'm going to let it spin for a couple of seconds and uh, finish evaporating all of the denatured alcohol. Then we'll come back and apply our first coat of CA. Take a look at that. That is a gorgeous piece of wood. It's gonna make a beautiful pin when it's all put together. I'll come back and uh, give you a look at the blank after I finish putting um, all of the coats of CA on it and it's ready to be polished. This mesquite blank really popped after I got it micro mesh. Just take a look how nice that looks. I've got the black locust pin blank chucked up and ready to turn. This looks like it's a pretty hard wood, so I'm interested to see just how easy or how difficult this blank is to turn. I've got my blank trued up and I'm really happy with how it's turning. I figured it'd be a lot more difficult than this. I mean, it's a hard wood, I can tell by the, by the little shavings that are coming off of it, but still it's actually turning fairly nicely.
This blank actually turned a lot easier than I expected it to. The wood is very hard, so it did take a longer amount of time to get the blank turned down to the bushings than normal. But look at the finish I got with just the skew. It looks incredible. Now, I have noticed a few imperfections in the wood. Like right here, there's like a crack. And then over here, there's one there and one right there. Uh, but that's just, that's part of the wood. I can't help that. So we're going to go ahead and uh, sand this down and we'll get her finished up and see how she looks. I think it's going to be a beautiful blank. I've got the blank sanded up and I wanted to wipe it down with some denatured alcohol and kind of give you an opportunity to take a look at the blank and see what it looks like. This is a beautiful wood. A lot of grain, a lot of pattern. It's going to make an incredible pin. That's going to look amazing. I just finished putting the CA on this black walnut blank. It looks pretty darn amazing if you ask me. That blank polished up real nice. Look at that. It's beautiful. It looks like a mirror finish. I often get asked how many RPMs I'm spinning at when I buff. I like to use about 1100 RPMs. This particular lathe uses belts. Uh, so the setting I have is 1240. I'm still within the ballpark, so I'm happy with it. I use a little bit of this blue buffing compound uh, and it does a nice job polishing up the CA finish on my blanks. That's beautiful. Look at that grain. What a gorgeous blank. Now that is a beautiful blank. First time assembling one of these, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it'll be all right. Notice my grain is going this way, so I decided to make this the nib end. And we're gonna get this blank into our pin press here. All right, nice, got a good fit. One thing that I forgot to do that I normally like to do is I forgot to put my bushing onto the end of my blank to protect it. Luckily, I didn't have to press that hard, so I'm not, I'm not worried about it this time, but always use a bushing to protect your blank. The next thing we wanna do is slide our clip over our cap assembly. And we have this little tool here that you slide over the clicker and that's used to keep you from damaging the clicker when you press that into the pin. We'll slide it into the end of our pin as far as it will go. And then we'll insert this into our press. I'm gonna make sure that that seats nicely around. The, it actually can slide. You see how it's kind of off a little bit there? Make sure it seats nicely. Then we'll just bring the press up and press our click assembly into the pin. Very nice. The nib on these, they unscrew. There we go. I'm going to pull the spring off here temporarily so I can get to this little ball and pull that off so that the ink works. There we go. We'll put our spring back in. We'll drop this into the pin assembly or the pin tube and we'll reinstall our cap and we've just assembled a long wood pin. Look at that. Well, that is really nice. This will be my first time assembling one of these long wood click pins. Looks pretty straightforward. I've taken a quick peek at the instructions. What we're going to do is put a bushing on the back of our blank to protect it. We've got this little coupler. We're going to slide that into the other end of the blank. And now we'll press that into the blank. Make sure it's all the way in. Yes, it is. We can remove our bushing now. I'm going to slide the uh, cap assembly 
through the clip. We'll place that onto the other end of the pin. We'll go ahead and press that into place. Ooh, that was a nice tight fit. I like that. Looking pretty good. Nice, nice. Now, this is the uh, ink assembly or the uh, lead assembly. We'll slide that in through the back of the blank all the way to the front. And we'll thread our cap into place, which locks it on. And we now have a long wood lead pencil, our mechanical pencil. There we go. What do you think about that? That is really nice. I actually love this. I think this is going to be my uh, everyday carry. I would like to thank you for joining me in the shop today for the turning of this long wood mechanical pencil and this long wood click pen kit. This video was made possible by Dave Patterson. He sent me these kits. They are from Rockler. And he sent me some beautiful blanks, mesquite that I used on the click pen and black locust that I used on the mechanical pencil. I had a great time turning them. Initially, I wanted to make two separate videos, but the videos were so identical in content that I decided to combine the content and make a single video. I really hope you enjoyed this. I'd like to thank you for joining me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.